Hi guys, today I want to talk about um, the magnificence of the journey. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I was just thinking of um, the um, um, what I've been talking about. Um, just just getting prepared in quarantine, finding um, way, ways God can use you in quarantine with your gifts and with your talents. And I was, God said to talk about the magnificence of the journey. When I'm when I say the magnificence of the journey, I don't mean everything that happens in this quarantine or in your life journey is magnificent. There there are there are things that happen to you that are totally not magnificent. But the magnificent part is what you do with those things. In quarantine, what are you doing with the greatness inside you? Because I, uh, I often believe that um, people are like so soil. What you put in yourself is what you get out of, out of yourself. So if you put in negative, 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 you'll get, you'll get uh, negative, negative, negative. But if you put in the pos positive part of yourself, like the word of God or a good sermon or, or something positive to live your spirits, that's, that's what you'll get out of it. So when I talk about the magnificent, I mean, what is God trying to get out of you in this season? What is he trying to wake you up to in this season? What is he what what um what I've said this before like what lessons is he trying to teach you in this season? If you're going to go through, I said this even before quarantine, but it bears repeating now. If you're going to um, go through all this with coronavirus and with um, uh, COVID-19, what are you learning from this about you? about society, about being prepared, and and what are you going to do with this? Um, what is he trying to foster in you? Because I believe that God is trying to foster something in you when it comes to um, what he's trying to wake you up to. There is something in you, in your soil, that he wants to grow out of this thing. So, you're, we're not going through this as a world for nothing. We're not going through this as, as a society for nothing. God is trying to get something out of us as a church as a society, as a, as a people. So the question to ask God is, what are you trying to get out of us? What are you trying to teach us? Because I believe in everything, there's a lesson. Like Oprah Winfrey always says, um, what has this challenge what has this issue come to teach us? And coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, has taught us so many good things about society and so many 
um, things we need to work on, so many challenges we have as a society, and so many things that we're, we're strong at. And it's taught us as the body of Christ so many things that we're strong at. So many, um, so many things we need to work on. So the question is, what is, is the, what is the magnificence that God wants to pull out of you in this season? What, what is in your soil that's been buried, that you've been afraid of, that you've been running from all your life that he wants to pull you out of in this season, that he wants you, you to get rid of in this season? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it lack of focus? What is it? Find what that is, get it out, or or develop it, and then you'll find your particular purpose for this season. And not everything that happens in your life is good, but everything that happens in your life can work together for, for good, as the Bible says. Um... He, he said, the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, but for those who can endure to the end. So, were you the kind of person before COVID to just give up? Or were you the kind of person to stick it out? Were you the kind of person to procrastinate when you should have been doing something? Or were you the kind of person to work yourself to the bone and, and forget about every, everything else? So, um, what is he trying to bring out of you in this season? What is he trying to get you to realize about yourself in this season? What is he trying to get you to change in this season? Folks, this is not just a time for you to sit around and watch movies. This is a time for you to assess yourself. No, first of all, this is a time for you to get closer to God. Develop that relationship. The relationship with the Lord, like any relationship, requires development. It requires time, it requires space, it requires all kinds of things, it requires prayer, it requires some form of communication, it requires getting to know how he talks to you. And once you figure that out, once you get to know God, then automatically you'll get to know who you are. Who are you? Who are you? That's what the Lord is saying to me to ask. Who are you? In this time of quarantine, past everything I mentioned in the previous videos, past creativity, past creating a new normal, past whatever I mentioned before, the Lord is asking in this season, who are you? Once you find out who you are, you can develop your focus, you can develop different creative ideas, you can develop different things. But if you don't know the core of who you are and whose you are, everything that I said in the previous videos is for not. Beloved, I love you so much. You need to find out who you are. And the only way to do that is to go to your creator and say, God, who am I? And there are so many people in this world, in this society, who don't know who they are. 
they're so busy following this person and that person and trying to keep up with the Joseph Joneses that they never stop to think, who am I? Who am I is not about what you do. It's about, um, first of all, who made you and who are you at the core of wh what you are, who you are. Oh, you could say, well, if you ask me who I am, I could say the superficial answer. I could say I am a writer. I could say I am a preacher. I could say all those superficial answers. I could say I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. And all that's true. But who, am, who I am first is a daughter of God. And what that means to me is I am his child first and foremost. And out of that, he's given me the gifts for creativity. He's given me the focus to put sermons together. He's given me the know-how to do what I'm called to do. But, but, but until I answer that first question about who I am, who he has created me to be, to be all of those other questions are not, will, will come to naught. Because if you don't know who you are, you could be doing something that you could, you would enjoy, but it's still um, um, not the purpose that you've been designed for. You could be doing something that feels good, but it's still not where you're designed to be. You need to discover who you are. You need to ask the Lord who you are and what's blocking you. What's blocking you from discovering that? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it shame? Is it something you buried from your past for years? A lot of people have buried stuff that they refuse to think about, that they refuse to acknowledge, that they refuse to acknowledge hurts them, that they refuse to acknowledge that um, is, has been damaging to them. You need to find out what that is. First of all, you need to find out who you are. And you need to find out, who, find out whose you are and what's stopping you from reaching who God has called you to be. Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it shame? And you need to work that out. And this quarantine is the perfect time to do that. Don't be afraid of it. He'll catch you. A lot of people are afraid of who they are, but there's no need to be. There's no need to be. You are God's child. He's created you for a purpose no matter what your past was. No matter what mistakes you made in your past, the Lord is still on the throne. He still loves you. He still cares for you. And he wants to give you so much. But unless you find out who you are, beloved, it will all it'll all be wasted. And believe me, he does not waste anything. You may waste your time, you may waste your money, you may may waste your resources. But God does not waste anything. And even if you feel you wasted time, you hung out with losers or whatever, all that you went through is for a purpose. And God does not waste anything. And God does not make mess. God does not um, waste space. Um, I was listening to 
um, Stephen Furtick um, this past sermon, and he was talking about something construction workers uh, call flex space, which is empty space that can be flexible to use for different things. And, and I'm here to tell you that you are not a waste of space. I don't care who told you whatever they told you, if they were upset or angry at you. You are not a waste of space. You are not an accident. Um, and sometimes he talked, ab he talked about, um, he talked about how, how the spaces you were in uh, were flex space in your home is now your sanctuary. But I, I will take it a step further and say you are God's uh, flex space, which means if you allow him to be flexible with your life, he will put you in things that you couldn't imagine. Some of us are so rigid with with our plans and our wants and our needs that we're not flexible. And if you allow yourself to be God's flex space and for him to be flexible in your life and take your life and do what he wants with it, you will be amazed with what he will do with it. But a lot of people say, God, I'll give you this and not this. God, you can have that and not that. You can have my worship, but not my money. You can have my relationship, but not my movie habits. See, he wants it all. He wants it all. And beloved, I know it's scary. I know it's scary. And sometimes with, with um, flex space, there are some times where it's empty and you don't know what's going in there next. But God is always working something behind the scenes. And if you are a are available to be God's flex space so he can use you for um, what he wants for the space he wants you to occupy until he comes you will be your mind will be blown uh, because of the places he'll take you let it go, beloved. Let your plans go. I know it's tough. I know, like, not knowing is so tough. And I have not, nothing against planning. But don't be so rigid with your plans that you miss God's blessings along the way. And you look around and say, what happened to my life? What happened is that you were too rigid. And, and you missed what God had what God had planned for you. But the amazing thing about God is He can redeem the time. He can give you back the years that, that the devil stole from you and not even the devil that you stole from you, that your rigidness, that your perfection, that your planning stole from you. Um, embrace the magnificence of this quarantine journey and be God's flex space be let him be flex let be flexible with what God wants to do with your life bye guys I will see you later and oh write a write a Right below this uh, video is yesterday, yesterday's story time Sunday. 
And let me tell you this. I've done, like, that's my 24th one. I've done a lot of story time Sundays, but this one is my favorite. And if you get a chance, please watch it. Um, it's sad, and it's full of twists and turns. I did it late last night, so it's kind of, um, it's, uh, it's kind of jumbled for some of it, but it's a really beautiful story, and if I could, I would turn it into a movie. Um, so guys, see you later. Bye, and don't forget to watch yesterday's story time Sunday right right below this posting. Thanks. Bye. Comment on it, like it, tell me what you think. Bye. And don't be afraid to let your life go. He gave you your life. He's not going to mess it up. He's going to rearrange it. And sometimes when he rearranges things, sometimes when you're sorting out things, I know in my house, things can get a little messy. But sometimes things have to get a little messy to get clean again. So, so sometimes that's what God is doing with our life. Like, he's making things a little messy and out of order for... for because he wants to clean us up. He wants to clean our lives out. So sometimes that's why it's a little messy. You don't get order without first a little chaos. But the problem is when the chaos lasts so long and there's no order coming out of it. But sometimes, uh, but most times, Chaos needs to happen for order to, 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 to come from it. So don't be surprised if God is wanting to do something wonderful and the, uh, and but it looks a little messy. He's just rearranging things in your life like we do with our closets or our uh, freezers or our cupboards or our, especially our clothes. So if you let him sort through the junk in your life, he will clean out your closets and he will clean you out um, to the point where you will be a brand new person. And he will be able to, to use you in such a wonderful way. And he loves mess. He loves to clean up mess. When you look in the Bible, he uses all this, all this, all these messy people with messy lives and messy paths to do, to do his greatest work. So don't be afraid if your life is a mess. He's just sorting it out to make something clean and new again. Bye, guys. That's a typical preacher second closing. <laughs> Sorry. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Bye.